Well, Mustafa Barghouti served as Minister of Information in the Palestinian Unity Government in 2007, and he joins me now live from Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. Mustafa, thank you very much indeed for your time. Um, clearly, Gazans will feel, uh, when it comes to these plans, that uh, they should be taking control not only of the territory but also of their own destiny. Is there any part of these plans that they could get behind? The Israeli plans uh, show the stupidity of the system of occupation, and Gallant is being stupid as, as in this case, because he wants to solve the problem of occupation by expanding occupation. But all these plans about reoccupying Gaza and then forcing people out of Gaza, and by the way, Smotrich and Ben-Gvir were not the first people to speak about that. It was Netanyahu. On the very second day of this uh, Israeli aggression on Gaza, he said that all Palestinians must be evicted from their homes in Gaza. And his uh, military spokesperson said they should be evicted to Egypt. So what we are talking here is a whole political system in Israel advocating a war crime of ethnic cleansing, in addition to conducting a war crime of genocide. Uh, and I believe that uh, th this approach is a reflection of the fact that Israel, since the very beginning, since 1948, has been and is still a settler colonial project that aims at total ethnic cleansing of all Palestinians. Palestinians will not accept the Israeli plans in any way, and especially the Gallant's plan, who is talking about not only occupying Gaza, but uh, not being responsible for the people they will occupy according to international law. He wants uh, an occupation that is free of charge, and at the same time, he wants to establish a system of collaborators who are working under the uh, Israeli control uh, to, to rule the, 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 the people of Gaza. This is not going to work. It didn't work in the past, and Israel doesn't learn from its mistakes. They've tried that before in the West Bank through the so-called village leagues, and they, they failed drastically. And, and it, it appears that um, just as important as what they are, have put in the plan is what has been left out of the plan, because there's no detail in there uh, whatsoever about how the West Bank would fit into it. Well, uh, they have already reoccupied the West Bank in the pro, uh, since the 7th of October. Israel uh, practically eliminated any authority of the Palestinian Authority. Israel reoccupied every city in the West Bank invaded every city. And now they are creating uh, terrible destruction in uh, different refugee camps in the West Bank, including Jenin, Tul Karim, uh, Nur Shams, and other places, uh, uh, imitating actually what's happening uh, of Gaza, in Gaza, and not in the same scale, of course. But the, the, the idea and the philosophy is the same, destruction, reoccupation, and ethnic cleansing. And they are already conducting ethnic cleansing of 60 percent of the West Bank, where settlements expansion is unprecedented. We are dealing here with one project, whether it is in the West Bank or in Gaza Strip or even inside Israel itself. It's a project of settler colonialism that is aiming at total and complete ethnic cleansing of all Palestinians. And this will not work, because the Palestinian people are determined to steadfast the Palestinian people are determined to resist this terrible injustice, and Palestinians are determined to get their freedom on their land and not in any other country. And how about the plan's detail that there should be absolutely no role for Hamas in any future solution? Is that, is that a proposal that could be accepted by any Palestinians or indeed wider in the region? Absolutely not. And uh, by which law Israel wants to decide who should govern Palestinians? Uh, would they accept if we say that, for instance, Netanyahu should be removed and all the government in Israel should be removed, and we would prefer that Meretz party, for instance, should be ruling Israel? Would they accept that? Of course not. Would anybody accept if we say who should be ruling the United States of America? Of course not. It's a matter that is in the hands of the public and the people of each country. And Israel has no right, and the United States has no right, to dictate on Palestinians who should be governing them. It's a matter that should be in the hands of the Palestinian people. And eradicating Hamas 
has proven to be impossible and it will be it continue to be it will continue to be impossible it's a bleak situation, Mustafa, but I do want to ask you this while we have the pleasure of your company. Is there anything that you can feel positive about when you look to the future of Palestinians and indeed Gaza? Yes, of course. I feel proud of our people. I feel proud of the resilience of the Palestinian people, especially our people in Gaza. I feel proud of our medical teams who lost more than 306 people killed by Israeli bombardment and have 90 of them uh, arrested by Israeli army, but they don't stop working. I am so proud of the younger generation of, of Palestinians in Gaza who show a great amount of heroism, trying to steadfast and stand up to the, these terrible war crimes. You can imagine what would be the situation of any country in the world when 29,000 people, if we count the people under the rubble, are killed, including no less than 13,000 children. But the level of heroism, steadfastness, determination is unprecedented. I am so proud of our people, and I am sure we will get to what we want eventually. We will get our freedom. And, and if anything has been proven during this attack on Gaza, it is that we cannot live anymore with occupation. We cannot live anymore with injustice of apartheid and racism that Israel is showing. I appreciate you joining us today. Mustafa Barghouti there, uh, who served as a minister uh, in the Palestinian Union, Unity Government in 2007. Thank you.